All right, and welcome back to another case study. As always, I'm a developing student, and these are just my interpretations of the price. Shout out ICT. Let's get straight into this case study. So as we can see, we've been anticipating this market maker buy model to form, and this is now the micro market maker buy model has finally come to an end. It's finally come to an end. We've now gone from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity on NQ. However, if we look at um, NASDAQ, we still have room to go. We still have, we still haven't liquidated the draw yet on uh, ES. So here is a one hour chart on ES. And yeah, as you can see, that's that daily order block level from the previous slide. You have that daily order block. We've changed the delivery on the daily. And now we're coming back down in uh, Thursday, this day, we used that order block nice, taking sell stops before then expanding higher. Very nice price action on this day. So yeah, we come back down, we uh, manipulate lower. We're just repricing that order block and we're taking sell stops while doing that as well and then we're starting to expand towards the draw liquidity here as we see we're probably going to liquidate this in the overnight session uh because we're already we've already done the manipulation so i would assume that we would just push towards that draw liquidity in the overnight session so as we see here this is nasdaq and this is yes and what do you notice what do you notice that we have here forming at the lows smt divergence so we have smt divergence at a key pdra at this one hour order block on nasdaq and since NASDAQ is a stronger one, since NASDAQ is towards the already existing draw and liquidity, I would say that NASDAQ would be the better trade, the, the easier trade, the, the more snappier, speedier, responsive will be NASDAQ. All right, and here is the 15-minute chart. And as you can see here, kind of like the same things have been happening throughout this whole week. Like we've had like low resistance liquidity to the upside and low resistance liquidity below us. So we have low resistance liquidity in form of these buy stops and we have low resistance liquidity in form of these sell stops. So we're within this range, we're within this range, market open is going to push up, take take buy side liquidity, and we also do form an SMT here, so there probably could be some shorting action, but we know the draw on liquidity is higher. We know that we're going from daily IRL to daily ERL, so therefore the better setups are going to be favoring uh, long entries, but we know that there's still going to be some short shorting opportunities in here. And here's that same chart on ES. So ES doesn't take this original consolidation, but NQ does. Forming that SMT, we get a uh, into that 15 minute for value gap, 8.30 opening price, project that out. We have a little bit of manipulation for the AM session, and then boom, we come off, uh, we, we come back down to that daily order block level, and we also take sell side liquidity, and we form SMT at the lows again, and then we come back up higher. So, so it was pr pretty, uh, you had, you had pretty chance to, you had like two decent models here. You had a sell model here originally, and then you had a buy model that after uh, we liquidate the draw on liquidity at around like 10 o'clock a.m. And then we continue the buy side. And as always, where's the low resistance liquidity at market open? I know that, yeah, we do have low resistance liquidity up here in terms of failure swings, but we have an SMT at the highs. So therefore, we don't need to go to those highs. And then once we start breaking down, we have a market structure shift. On the five minute, we create an imbalance, also a breaker right here. We return to that breaker, boom, then we sell off, come back up, order block, boom. And just look at that nice distribution. Here's that 8.30 opening price again. And then all of these failure swings, all these failure swings. The market is more likely to head to this low resistance liquidity, all these failure swings than it is to come all the way back up to these high resistance liquidity. I know it doesn't look like it's high resistance liquidity on ES, but the fact that we have SMT means that we don't need to head higher. And also, that's that 15-minute imbalance here. And then this right here is an hourly imbalance, I believe. All right, and then here is just marking uh, that SMT with that for value gap. That SMT, buy side taken on NQ, and then we have the SMT. All right, and here here's a very nice sell model at market open. It's very, it's very beautiful. I see you have your lower risk entry right here in terms of the fair value gap, and then you have your distribution, and then you have your second phase of redistribution so you have your first stage of distribution second stage of redistribution and boom look look at the snappiness of that second phase like if this is a perfect example of second stage distribution and why it's so powerful why it's so speedy why it's so snappy why ict loves it as you see here we got to coming in order block as well fair value gap boom boom it's like this beautiful beautiful study in price right here just beautiful why are we doing this? Because we have low resistance liquidity on uh, below us. We have low resistance liquidity signatures. Although the bias is bullish, 
although the daily time frame is bullish, although we are in this market maker buy model on the daily, we're still able to manipulate and we're still able to have days like this to where we get some decent um, sells and, and boom. And as we see, 10 a.m., 10 a.m. starts another move higher and at 11 a.m. we really distribute up towards uh, these highs here because that's where the market truly wants to head. And here is that 950 macro on the one minute on S&P. As you see, 950 macro, we're offered a retracement, we're offered an entry, and then 1010 just starts to spool in lower. And as you see here, we end up creating a buy model after that. But just beautiful delivery right here. Consolidate here, uh, uh, market opens right here. What do we do? Push lower, liquidate sell stops, and we come back up, create an imbalance. And then that market open, we have a fair value gap at market open. That's the fair value gap we use. And boom, it's very, very nice, very nice, very nice. And here is a 15 minute chart on NASDAQ. So after we've had that SMT, we've had displacement, we're also in that hourly order block. We have a 15 minute order block, and then we have a 15 minute change of state delivery. Price uses that order block very nicely, and we come back up. Taking the draw on liquidity on NASDAQ throughout this day. And then we come back down. We have a breaker right here. Excuse me. Sorry. We have a breaker right here. Uh, we're sorry. Yeah. This would be a mitigation since we didn't take these lows. So this would be a mitigation. Sorry. You also could maybe frame this as your mitigation. But I'm going to use this one because there's more significance. This is kind of just, I, don't, I wouldn't really want to use this price action. It doesn't have much volume. So I'm going to refer to this right there. And it looks, it looks a lot better on the five minute, in my opinion, than using these candles over here. So here's that five minute chart. And it come back down uh, as we see the, those levels. And then we have a five minute order block. Boom, where's prices come right to? This five minute order block after we've had that change of state delivery. Notice how we, I guess this would be your market structure shift right here. But like the the true like break of structure, I guess you could say it would Probably be here. I don't really use market structure shift that much. I like to more see change of state delivery because that's where the algorithm actually changes the state delivery. Boom, you go buy to buy side, and then here we have a five minute imbalance right here. And look at that beautiful. And then as you see here, we're creating high resistance liquidity signatures into this imbalance. We come back up, we reprice these highs. All right, and here is a one minute chart of that of of this area in, in price right here. And here's a one minute order block, the lowest down close candle. Look at that beefy down close candle. Price comes back down to it. And look at what we form. We form SMT within that key PD rate and also into this inversion fair value gap. And you can map that out. And boom, we uh, take sell stops within here. And then that would be a very nice. And uh, notice what time this is happening as well. 1050 macro. We have a 1050 macro right here. And then 1110 ends around here. And then we started spooling higher. And that's what I was going to highlight in this slide. 11.10 starts to spooling higher. We get another retracement right here. Off of this fair value gap and this uh, mitigation right here. We have a mitigation block right here. Map that out in time. Why does price only refer to this high right here? Because that's where fair value is offered within the market. And then, boom, we, we explode higher. And here is the PM session. Here is the PM session. Uh... Like I was showing, we have the one, two, three drive. We have high resistance liquidity signatures into this PD rate. Where are we more likely to go? Where are we more likely to go? We keep on creating high resistance liquidity. We keep on sweeping liquidity. We keep on sweeping liquidity. Just where, where is price likely to go? We're likely to head to buy side. And uh, we have here, we, we, we sweep this liquidity right here, but we barely purchased for value gap. We, and then we, then we kind of displaced, tripping up some traders, referring to this uh, order block right here. And then we display slower. We more meaningfully purge into this imbalance. And then we start distribution higher. No spells what we have here. We have a breakaway gap. Why is it a breakaway gap? Because we offered sell side and then buy side. Fair value gap in, fair value gap out. That's that's exactly what we want to see. That becomes a BPR fair value gap. And that's that those are one of the signatures that I love to see. It was here. We have a fair value gap in, fair value gap out on the one minute. But this failed. This failed. And, and that's completely okay. Maybe you took an entry. You, maybe you wanted to see an entry right here. You wanted to see an entry right here. Like, oh, 2 p.m. silver bullet. Yeah, we're going to have 2 p.m. silver bullet. But then you would have end up getting stopped out because we barely purged this this fair value gap. So the algorithm wants to really trade aggr more aggressively within this fair value gap. And that's what you end up doing. Notice that buy side liquidity has been taken already. We've already purged that that market maker model on the 
on the daily time frame. So we've already completed the, the weekly objective, quote unquote, because we the weekly objective was to complete that market maker model. We've already completed that. So therefore, there's not really too much motive for price to go higher other than ES to complete its market maker model. So anything here, I would say it would just kind of be a little bit low probability. But there's still there's still trades to be taken. As you see here, focusing on those down close candles, we come down here and then we have an order block right there. Price gets supported there. That that's that breakaway gap. And then boom. We have another uh, down close candle range. And then I don't know what what is that referred to? I believe that's a five minute balance that I have marked out right here. Price trades in a five minute balance here. We also have mitigation and then uh, another area of mitigation up to draw liquidity. And then here, I'm denoting standard deviation, the last manipulation move. And then that's very, very nice. Negative one, standard deviation right there. And here's some more standard, devi standard deviations. We have this fulcrum point right here, negative 0.5. Boom, math that out. And here we have the first retracement leg, negative 2, negative 2.5. Then we have that three level that almost gets hit, but doesn't quite yet. And yeah, th that was pretty much the action that we had today. I thought that was... Uh, pretty, pretty, it's pretty good to see in price action. Uh, we have a, we had a nice, very nice distribution, very nice dis distribution at 10 a.m. at in that 9:30 Judas swing, and then we had 10 a.m. expansion, 10:30, 11 a.m. expansion, and then we had a nice uh, p.m. session, 3 p.m. later in the day, but buy program right there to be activated. I'm not really looking too much at a sell program here, but looking back. Yeah, on the five minute, there kind of was a uh, buy side liquidity taken, displacement. You have your breaker right there, boom, to, to sell side liquidity here. Yeah, that could have been a trade. That could have been a trade. But for me, I would more look to take this long here. And yeah, that was the action that we had. And I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys within the next, uh, the next case study.